You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. <laughs> Coming up on this episode of the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. I'm going to be an awesome dad. I'm going to be an awesome provider and husband. And this is how I'm going to get it done. And I'm good with my hands and problem solving. Plumbing, great. My father-in-law was a plumber, so that's what I did. Josh Little John, funny enough, takes me outside and he's like, you know, we've been talking about this coffee shop thing. He's like, what do you think right there? He's like, you know, what do you think about like coffee shop, right? And he's like, He's like, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm throwing that out there. Think about it. Because joy comes from the Lord. It's a fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit being made evident and like made manifest in your life, it it builds an atmosphere. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Kingdom Bringer Podcast, episode 53. So good. I had an awesome, awesome privilege of sitting down with Mr. Redbeard, a.k.a. Clinton Conant. Clinton came over to the, the studio a couple weeks ago when we sat down and talked about all things coffee. <laughs> Just kidding. We talked about his uh, startup of Redbeard Coffee, where it came from, what it's all about, how he releases the kingdom in the coffee shop. It's going to be a good one. Did you guys enjoy the first episode? Shoot us a message. Let us know if you liked Talking Kingdom with Brandon Gatz and Marcus Rogers, Matt Cruz. I had a blast doing that one, and I think it came out really well. I think it sounded pretty dang awesome. So I'm pumped about it. So I'm not going to be much uh, longer on this intro. This is Clinton Conant, a good friend, just a loving dude. He, he loves people very, very well. He's a pastor here locally, also runs this coffee shop called Redbeard Coffee here in Dodge City, Kansas, doing really well with it. And he's got four children, three girls, a beautiful wife, Courtney, who I've had on the podcast before and this was just a good time to sit down kind of we hadn't talked in a while we hadn't been together for a bit so it was refreshing to be able to sit down and really catch up so we got to catch up a little bit talk about what he's up to where he's been it was fun you guys are going to enjoy this please go rate and review on apple podcasts and if you're listening to this on any platform where you can share it share it with your friends Send a text, put it on Facebook, do whatever. Let's help get this out there. That would be a huge help. I would appreciate it very, very much. And if you checked out the all new kingdombringer.com, I want to give a big shout out to Jason Villanueva of the Salty Dogs podcast. He reached out to me and asked if I wanted help with building a new website. And when I heard it, I was like, well, I guess that means that mine's pretty crappy. <laughs> So he was right. My website was very crappy and he helped me get going here on a new Squarespace page and it's clean. It's easy. I like it a lot. The blogs are on there. Easy access to the podcast. Go check that out. If you haven't already share that with your friends too. And like always, just send us a message, shoot us an email. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us at Darren, D A R I N at kingdom bringer dot com and if you haven't checked out next level podcast with michael mcintyre go do that too it'll get you going it'll jack you up it'll inspire you to go to the next level so check it out that's next level podcast with michael mcintyre here we go i've taken too long on this already hope you guys enjoy this episode don't forget to share it with your friends here's my sit down chat with red beard himself Clinton Conant. You know, a lot of 50 rep sets, you know, four times, like four sets. So, like, you know, you, you might only put on 30 pounds and you just, like, go after it. 
till your arms feel like they're gonna. You call like, it cardio. I out. call that cardiac arrest. <laughs> yeah, for I think real. we'll. Uh, no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get into it though. I need to. I need to do it. I told him. I said, I'm not. <laughs> not body sculpting. I'm losing right. weight. Yeah. Right. So I think he said there's some bikes in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I can jump on. <laughs> Watch you guys. Hey, I got a. I got an elliptical and a. Uh, cr- uh, uh, deal for sale so look behind you i've got one <laughs> it's a little dusty yeah. yeah and this is my excuse so my head almost hits the ceiling in there yeah i know right and i'm scra- i'm squatted yeah. down <laughs> and my back hurts really bad so yeah yep. it's a good exercise yeah. isn't for me yeah that's right yeah it's Man, terrible don't do it, it happen bro i wanted to have you on i want to this episode's going to be uh kingdom in the coffee house right on and uh, I might put it. With, I might put coffee with a K. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> it's it's a punny thing to do. H A W S. Alliteration. H A W S. Yeah. And I just I love the story, bro. We've kind of been apart in relationship yeah. for a little bit, but we were we were together there for a while. I remember when you started this thing, Redbeard Coffee. When you started it, actually before you started it, I remember you were very inspirational to me in regards to, man, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to have this coffee shop. And many of us were like, Oh, that sounds really cool. Right. That sounds really neat. (laughs) And I, you can correct me if I'm wrong and please do, but you, you weren't always a guy that would just go after the things you wanted to do. Yeah. No. And, Mm. And we all knew that. Yeah. And so it was kind of a, Oh, that's cute. We'll believe it when we see it. Right. Sure. And then all of a sudden, Sure. You are gutting out of a building and you are literally doing the desires of your heart, like yeah. what you wanted to do. Yeah. And it was very inspirational to yeah. me to watch you go through that process. <laughs> Thank you. And if you can, man, many people are going to know who you are. Many people are not. I'd like you to kind of introduce yourself a little bit in regards to that, like where this dream came from, what I'm even talking about, Yeah. who you are, where you're at. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Man, uh it's it's a it is so much to really try to like compre- I, I oh, put yeah. into words cuz you're right, I wasn't the guy that uh chased after the dream. Um I was the guy that like I remember so I I, I like I went to school, went to college for like 3 years, <laughs> never finished. Um because I looked at life and I was like, man, I college is that I'm not doing, I'm not passionate about any of this. Yeah. Um, like, cause I was a ministry major Yeah. and, and I was like, if the Lord, like I, I, that was the first time I felt like I heard the Lord, like in, in an, in a new and audibly way. Yeah. He said, if I want to use you in ministry, you don't need a degree. Yeah. And I thought, does God say stuff like that? Right. <laughs> but I, I was at Where, the time. Where'd that come from for you as far as like thinking that you needed one? Because I felt that way too. I think it just, it, it's just, just the way you the, do things. Yeah, the right? way, way I grew up. Uh, I mean, I, I grew up in the Nazarene church and, and in a, in a very deep faith based family, you yeah. know, uh, the Lord was always very, um, very much front and center in our lives and, and in, in what we did. But I, I think I went to Christian college thinking that I was going to find myself and what I was going to do. And I thought, well, you know, I, I love, I always enjoyed my, my youth ministry, like being, or not, I mean like youth ministry and the idea that I could be the fun guy that gets to come home, you know, come to the right. church and take all the kids to do fun things. Kind of like the PE teacher. Yeah. Yeah. You're like the PE teacher of, of ministry. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it like that, but that's great. That's fantastic. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where, uh, a lot of it was, was headed. Um, but I desired like, a deeper understanding. So then all of a sudden I found myself as a theology major. And then it was like, we were arguing about God and, and like all these, things. I'm like, what does this have to do right. with our salvation with anything? I mean, like yeah. we're arguing about these, like how you understand it and to interpret scripture. And I just, like, what's it for? Yeah. And there was this longing for, and, and that was, it was about that time that the Lord, I, I feel like for me was not, not feel like that was the first time the Lord spoke to my heart. And was like, if I'm going to use you in ministry, you don't need a degree in theology or youth ministry to do it. It's good. And I was like, okay, so what does that mean? Well, at the time I had met my wife at college. And that was when I realized 
that's why I went to college was to meet my wife. There so, because yeah. it was a, a whole nother thing there. Anyway, fast forward. So I got into plumbing, became a plumber because I did what I had to do. I would not have to do what I needed to do to provide for my wife and my family. Um, that's, that was, that was the guy I was like, I was going to provide because uh, I'd seen my father do it and do it well. Yeah. Like I'm going to be an awesome dad. I'm going to be an awesome provider and husband. And this is how I'm going to get it done. You know, and I'm good with my hands and problem solving plumbing. Great. My father-in-law was a plumber. Um, I went after it. So that's what I did. Family business. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Went in the family business. Um, and I felt like I did really well at it. I felt like I did, um, a good job and, you know, uh, did what I needed to do and, and learned at the same time and enjoyed myself and, and it was all good. Right. Um, so then fast forward, like what, 10, I've been doing that for 12 years, 10 years, some, 10, 12 years, something like that. I can't, I can't yeah. um, it's relevant. Uh, we had moved back home, started having kids. Um, we were, we'd been in Kansas oh, did city. Ya? Yeah. So we've been in Kansas city, <laughs> started having kids back home. Um, you know, kind of walking through life back at our home church. Um, you know, then we, you know, started the gathering and life started progressing. I started like really discovering what the Lord had for me and for my wife and what, what he really asked and desires of us. And, and just like started that journey with the Holy spirit, like leading, which was new for us, you know, to, and it was so good. And, then you like start dreaming again yes. and you go and you didn't realize that you weren't dreaming before. Right. right? Yeah. And so like, you know, because you thought you were being faithful and you were, and I was, I was being faithful to, to my family and to myself and to, and, and to the Lord in some ways. You only know what you know. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then comes like dreaming again. So like, what's that look like? And what would I dream for? Like, why, you know, the Lord led me back. I had to go back to Kansas city right after we started, uh, pretty much right as we were starting the gathering, uh, church and man, that was an up and down like thing thinking that like, why would the Lord take me away from what, you know, we're doing da 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 da. You know, like I'm, I'm not with the, the people that we're trying to pastor all these, all these things like go through your head. Yeah. You know, I'm like, God, why are you taking me to the desert at this time? Like, yeah. that doesn't make sense to me. Through so that, you're, so real quick, you're 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 basically going for the American dream, right? Yeah, With right. The job and the yeah, 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 taking care of the family, the growing family, right? And then you get, and you were just doing church, yeah, most of your life, right? Right. Yep. Same here. And then we, the Lord gets a hold of. A group of people, this yes. new thing starts, this yep. new exciting, right. fresh, spirit-led movement really yeah. starts yeah. in your hometown, yep. and then you're called, right? Yes. And you chose yeah. to go to Kansas City. Yeah. Work told me And continue to, to yeah. work. Yeah. 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 Work work put, took me back to Kansas City and out of this situation. So I have, I'm back in Kansas City and I'm there like 90% of my time. Yeah. You know, we'll hit back for some weekends here and there, but it was full on and um, but through that, like the Lord started really pruning me <laughs> for lack of a better term it was a pruning season. Um, and you know, I got rid of a lot of myself and like, what was I really, you know, what was my role and my part in that? Um, started learning a lot about who God created me to be, um, which I believe is a pastor. Yeah. You know, I love to, I love to, I love people. Yeah. I'm almost, that's just God designed me that way. And, um, Sometimes I do it really well. Sometimes I don't, you know, yeah. we all make mistakes and all For that. Sure. But, but anyway, God took me back to Kansas city and through that, you know, I got into coffee, um, met a guy there. I had a coffee shop and a roaster and like, we just became friends. You Something know? was brewing inside. Yeah. Of you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good one. <laughs> this is the dad joke portion of the show. <laughs> um, so what, what, while, while you're in the whole time, your family's here, right? Yeah, for the most part, Pretty it's much. off and on. I mean, there was times as like, it started growing. I think you yeah, had, yeah, yeah, because we didn't have any in school yet. They were all little, yeah. little, and so, um, and then when my wife wasn't, she was teaching for part of it, but then she was she finished uh, teach. She stopped teaching and went, you know, full time mom um, at home. And um, I think that obviously started then in the summer, but then uh, then stayed that way. Yeah. Um, and so then they would they were able to start coming you know, with me. So there was like two and three weeks at a gotcha. time. Okay. 
So during this time too, I know you had you had an opportunity to kind of move up, yeah, the ranks, if you will, sure. right? To like, sure, be yeah. the, be the man of this family sure. business. Is yeah, that right? yeah, yeah. Well, I was looking. I was, you know, we were definitely looking at uh, into the, you know, the the buying out uh, realm. We kind of started on on a course to to do that, and I thought, you know, this is this is the best thing for my family as far as financially and providing for is to, you know, look to take over the family business, so to speak. And, and, uh, it's what made sense for sure. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I was in it and I'd been in it for a long time and, um, and yeah, it was just the, it was just the next right step, Yeah. you know, and, and that's good and it's okay. Um, but in the course of, you know, growing through all this, you know, my desire was still to be, a part of what God would, had originally started in Dodge City, and that yeah. was the gathering, and and also just community, and like fulfilling that part of me that said, you know, you're a pastor, you know, of people, and yeah. like you just want to be with people. And what does that look like? And you know, I, I did that on the job site. You know, we c- you can always do that um, for sure. You know, right. we yeah, you know, it was there, um, but I just looked at it, and now that I have this like love for coffee and like this idea, you know. Funny enough. What was the idea? The idea was, I mean, originally I thought to myself, man, it'd be great to have a really cool coffee shop in that city and like downtown. It just, I don't know. It just kind of almost made sense. Like we've got a church that's in this downtown area. It's right. kind of cool and quote unquote hip maybe. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> and it, sure. was, it was just very different from everything else happening in town. And so it was like, man, to, bo- to birth like a coffee shop community type deal right out of the church um, man, it'd be great. And this like spot had opened up business had closed literally just across the street from the church. And, um, in relationship with somebody who owns it, right? Well, yeah, oh, no. no, no, at the time, you're right, you're right. at the time it wasn't, um, um, yeah, actually the only other coffee shop in town was the owner of that coffee shop yeah. owned this building. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Funny enough. That's but right. anyway, yeah, yeah. um, we were, uh, we'd done worship practice and Josh little John, funny enough, takes me outside and he's like, you know, we've been talking about this coffee shop thing. He's like, what do you think right there? He's like, you know, what do you think about like coffee shop? Right. Like, and he's like, he's like, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm throwing that out there. Literally across it. the street from yeah. the church. Yeah. I mean, we're talking a hundred feet yeah. and I, I kind of like it, it like planted a seed in my what head. What was your first thoughts though? I, I did just, you, did it feel daunting to you? I mean, or, or was oh, yeah. it something where you were like, the spirit was like, yes, this can happen. Kind of both. Yeah. Because your flesh automatically goes, well, how, how am yeah. I going to do that? I don't understand, you know? Right. And, but, but at the same time, you know, the way he spoke it to me is like the Lord was like, yeah, it was kind of like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, how much does it help to have somebody else believe in you too? That's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, and that, I think that's why the dreaming thing starts again. Yes. Because you have people that believe in you and say, that's good. you know, they speak truth. I mean, that's, that's like the purpose of prophecy and that's why we do it. You know, it's because you want to prophesy the things, the good things of heaven into being, like that's into good. happening. And that's exactly what people like Josh Littlejohn did. Yeah. And, and a lot of others. And, yeah. um, and so it was just, it was really cool. So then it's like, okay. Well, so what is that? What's the, what's the next step? And, and for me, again, like going back to the whole, I was not a guy to take, just take risks like that. Like yes. just to go after a quote unquote dream, a pipe dream. Um, but you know, with, with somebody like Josh Littlejohn in your back and then Josh Yarnell, who is like, he's like a bulldog. He just, yeah. he's a pusher. He'll, he'll go for it. Like he, he just, what, he, there's a wall. Uh, yeah, exactly. What? Wall? Boom. Yeah, exactly. And and he he got behind me and he's like, well, why don't you just go ask? Like, you're not going to know unless you ask. Yeah. And I was like, OK. So I call the building owner, try to set up a meeting, go look at it. We uh, I think I think Yarnell and I went and looked at it, uh, talked to him a little bit. And in the middle of the deal, he's like, so what are you thinking about putting in here? And I, <laughs> I tell him and. And that was at the time I didn't realize that he was the building owner or the uh, coffee shop owner of the other coffee shop. Anyway, long story short, that was in like, I don't remember when it was like maybe a September, October. Um, he's like, well, I'm going to wait till after the first of the year to maybe rent this thing and we'll kind of go from there. And I'm like, oh man, okay. Uh, you know, in the middle of this, I'm kind of going, 
at this time, I'm thinking I can do both the the plumbing deal and this maybe on the side. Yeah. You know? And that just didn't sit. Yeah. That didn't sit. We were like. And and help pastor a church. Yeah, exactly. I I started looking at it and have, you know, at the time, I think I only had two kids, three kids, three kids. And I'm looking at going. With dreams of 12. Right. Yeah, right. Um, (laughs) um, But I was looking at that going. Okay, I as much as I wanted that, you know, the reality of trying to really do that well in a smaller town, it was beginning to look more and more like that's yeah. nah, not going to happen. So fast forward into the next year, he's not wanting to rent it. It's not going up for rent at all. It's set there vacant now for six, eight months. Yep. I want to say it's sometime in like May now and for another friend from the church. Um, you know, we've spitballed ideas. I've been sketching on pads, like what I want to name it. Yeah. Like I'm dreaming really hard. That's about always it. my first thing, bro. Whenever I'm dreaming, it's yeah. back when I was a kid, I wanted to start bands. You gotta have the name. Yeah. You gotta oh, have the yeah. band names. I got notebooks <laughs> full of band names. Sorry, yeah. No, that's great. And that's, that's kind of what it was. Like, yeah. what would we name it? Like, this what would it be brand. about? Uh, yeah. What would the brand look like? Yeah. Um, so we, you know, I'm dreaming about that. And then a friend of mine approaches me and he says, Hey, are you, still you're you're still want to do the coffee shop thing i'm like yeah I, I do and he said well do you want that space and i said absolutely it'd be a perfect space it's on a corner it's like it'd be it and uh he said well good because i bought the building <laughs> so you're you can have that space and i said yeah. i i mean that was when like everything's accelerated i was gonna say is that when the momentum started going pretty yeah bad? yeah because yeah, at that time it, it's like it's a the dreaming stage is like, okay, this could be a reality. I'd been running numbers. Like I'm, I'm crunching things going like, you know, even if we had like this much and that we could do this, I, mean, I you know, I'm, I'm looking at every part of it. I'm, I'm talking to like, you know, people who are like coffee providers, my buddy in Kansas city. He's like, Oh yeah, we'll totally get you coffee. Like this would be a great thing. Um, I had so much support from him, which is, which is really, really cool for a guy, you know, I, I'd only known for like just a couple of years. Um, you know, to really attach on and go, yeah, I'd love to, you know, help you start a coffee shop. And then I'd love to help you get into being a roaster and I'd love to help you, you know, yeah. you're going, wow. Like that's a big deal. I think that's such a, for me, man, you know, when, when people have this dream or this vision or this desire to go after something and they're praying to the Lord, yeah. and they're looking for a sign. Yeah. For me, one of the top signs, bro, is do other people believe in it too? Yeah. Not just it, but like, sure can get behind you right. and help push yeah. financially yeah. putting his money where his mouth was and mm-hmm. saying, I remember you talking about a coffee shop. I just bought the building. Right. right. And I'm going to approach you because I want your vision right. in my building. There's something powerful about yeah. the ability that we have to, to launch people into their, absolutely into their destinies for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and the Lord had been the guy that bought the building, you know, the Lord had been giving him dreams for months about, um, just pieces of, of like a puzzle and, uh, and he would reveal the reveal those pieces to him slowly. And, and he felt like that building and, and, uh, downtown was, was part of that at the time. And, yeah. um, and that's a big deal. Like to, to put your, like you said, to put your money where your mouth is like, based sure. on a dream that the Lord yep. gave you and confirmations in that. And, and if, if for nothing less, you know, or nothing else, like, you know, Redbeard was born, you know, based yeah. on, on a guy trusting the Lord when he said, you know, too. You know, that's good. Um, so as you're, yeah, as you're constructing and you're starting to get this thing going, you're mm-hmm. literally going in there. Yeah. Before and after church, you guys are busting through stuff. Oh yeah. Clean it up. You had a vision of what you wanted it to look like. What was, what was your heart behind the, the ministry part of that business? You know, um, because I know that was very evident because you shared that multiple times. Absolutely. About what you wanted from that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. When when the Lord showed me the coffee shop, um, coffee's one of those things I learned very quickly, like going to coffee shops, the people that go in there are just they're so different. They're so different. Like you can get every ethnicity, religion, race, up, down, you know, like group. They could be about motorcycles to knitting to it doesn't matter it's true it doesn't matter people go people love coffee so um multi-generational yeah, yeah. exactly you, you look at it and that's that's really what you're what you're doing is you're providing a space and and a, and a moment 
you know, for people to connect, build a relationship. That that's you know, you're yeah. curating something. Yeah. Um so for me that was what the start was. Um and listening to the Holy Spirit and like like the idea of kingdom business and what that even really looked like. Like we were just like for us, you know, we're fresh a couple of years into even understanding what the kingdom right. made manifest on earth looked like. Yeah. And like we get to do that. We get yeah. to be a part of that. Um and so like the whole idea of saying like this yeah, it's a coffee shop and it's a money maker and it's cool and and whatever. But why can't it be all those things and hands and feet? You know, it's yeah. like loving people, praying for people, like changing lives, ch- building community, like really changing community. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was the vision. Yeah, that was the vision to be like, um, community minded from day one, about all about the people. You yeah. know, um, you know, it's funny like people talk about business all the time and you know, marketing strategies and blah, blah, blah. But you're right. Like people want to get behind something. Yeah. What are they getting behind? And if it's something that like you're constantly redirecting it toward other people, like no, we're about other people. Like people want to get behind that. Yeah. Because we all want to be for other people. Right. You know, and for their success and for not, not just for their success, but like success in life, not just in the business, but like, like we want to see, you know, a community grow and change and build and, um, people to be provided for, you know, like that's why we have so many like charitable, you know, type places that take care of people. Yeah. You know, America is one of the give, most giving yep. countries in all the world probably is the most giving. Yeah. And it's because we tapped into like our basic desire to help one another. It's good. You know? Yeah, that's good. Um, so ex- and, expl- yeah. explain the power of the presence of God in in your place without, without God's presence, without the kingdom being released in that place, what would that place be? It would just be another cool coffee shop. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have great decor. It looks cool. We have yeah. fantastic coffee. <laughs> Do you truly believe that it is different in regards to kingdom presence? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, explain that. How, how is that possible? I think it's, I think you build an atmosphere. Um, but I think you can start, it starts with something as simple as joy because joy comes from the Lord. It's a fruit of the spirit it's good. and the fruit of the spirit being made evident, evident and like made manifest in your life. It, it builds an atmosphere. It's and good. I know because we've watched like now we've been a, a shop for a couple of years. I've watched how like when I'm maybe not as involved or I'm trying to like stay, I'm focused elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and I'm not building that atmosphere by being present with my people, um, constantly letting the, like the fruit of the spirit, like be like made manifest in my own life because I'm distracted or I'm stressed or I'm trying to control something. Um, yeah, you can tell the atmosphere that the shop builds, it dwindles, it, it changes and it's not the same. But as soon as like, we meaning me and my family and like the staff and we're like focused back on that. And we're like intentional with being God's kids and knowing who we are and letting him be made manifest. And like people see that fruit, they feel it, they understand it. They, it's just, it builds an atmosphere for the Lord to do something. It's good. And that's just us being who God made us to be, you know, and that's hands and feet. What's the biggest thing you've learned from this this process of taking a risk? Because it was a risk. Oh yeah. What was the what was the what was the biggest risk? Yeah. Well, the biggest risk was for for me at the time was I mean and, and still is is the financial security. I left a, yeah. a salary position, you know, a nice salary position, yeah. you know, with lots of benefits and all that kind of stuff. And um, I have none of that now. Yeah. You know. Um, some months, you know, it's easy to write yourself a check. Some months you're holding on to that check for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't sound worth it to me. Was it worth it? Or not? <laughs> oh, it, I've never, I'd never do anything different. Yeah. When, because, you know, I, I got to operate as the best me and I got to be the pastor that I want to be, you know, it doesn't mean I always do it perfect or, or I do it well all the time. Cause like I said, we've had the ebbs and the flows of for sure. operating well and operating not so well. Yeah. Um, but 
I found true fulfillment in like letting the Lord do what he wants to do in my life. Um, and I believe, I believe a kingdom coffee shop, you know, people try to make coffee shops into churches all the time. Right. Um, and, and I, that's a good thing. I'm not, I don't, I'm not For discounting sure. that in any way. Um, but what I, what I've learned and what I know is that sometimes the simplest version of that, meaning being willing to reach over the bar in a moment and pray for someone right. like, you know, because you realize like you just read people, you yeah. read people all day long and you just realize they're just not themselves yeah. or like something's going on and you're willing to ask the question and you're willing to reach over the bar and pray for him is the biggest difference. Yeah. Talk about setting an atmosphere and a tone. You know, I remember in those first few weeks, Josh and I, we'd be pulling people off to the side. We'd have a line to the door and we're praying for people because it was that important. Yep. And that that's what set a tone in an atmosphere that was different. We were different than any other thing going on in Dodge, so yeah. to speak, like business wise. They're like, I just wanted to give a cup of coffee, but like I got blessed. And they, you know, whether they even really know like the you know, the Lord or they they know that he wants to do that for them and he he wants to like bring people or not. They, yeah. whether or not they know that, like they walk away going, man, I just was so blessed. And I didn't even know I needed that. Like, I needed something so badly. And I, I felt, I felt it. I, I received it. Yeah. Um, that was just, a, that was a huge, yeah. huge change. Yeah. Big deal. And that came from you. So the, the whole purpose, man, behind this kingdom bringer brand is just the idea that we carry the kingdom inside of us. Yeah. So many times I grew up believing that ministry was for the staff of churches it was for sure. going to school and becoming a youth minister yeah. or yeah. a head pastor or whatever sure. or like that was the end game yeah. just getting in full-time ministry and for doing sure. that. but the idea that we actually carry the kingdom and everywhere we go we can release the kingdom's power yeah. and the kingdom's glory everywhere we go you've done that in this in this coffee shop yeah literally knowing who you are like you've said multiple times and I, I love the idea of the joy because it's it's actually his joy that you're releasing. Yeah, right? Absolutely, it's absolutely. not yours because I'm sure there's plenty of days. Because early on, sure. you, you didn't even live in this town, right? Right, right. So you had you had a a business minute, yeah. early morning coffee shop right. in Dodge, and you were driving. Yeah, yeah, not a not a ton, but it was for us out here. It's, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> enough to want to stay in bed for sure. Sure, and I'm sure there wasn't always joy starting this business. Yeah, like. In the natural, I'm sure it wasn't oh, yeah. like the risk still glared a little bit. I'm oh, sure yeah. you went over it. Absolutely. So where'd that joy come from for you? You know, I that's a, I, that's a gift that I feel like the Lord gave me a long time ago. Um, but I got it from my father too. Like he modeled what joy is, you know. My dad's just a, you know, he's not like a, you know, I wouldn't say he's jolly. Yeah. Like, like boisterous or by any stretch. <laughs> But he's just so consistently positive. Steady, yeah. Yeah, he's so consistently positive. And he's just he is he's very he's a very steadfast man. You yeah. know, just very like um he's just a true father and he does he does he's just lived his life very well. Oh. And and seeing that and knowing that from my heart, um, like we could always we were always taught to find joy. Because yeah. man, the world whew, come on. The world just they should tons of it's always what's the worst thing we can look at or find yeah. or, you know, I mean, like our perspective has always shifted downward. Um, whereas, you know, I just, I learned at a very young age that, you know, the glass is, the glass is always half full. Yeah. There's always gold yeah. to be brought out. How um, has this been for you as, as a father? You, you now have four children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Had your first boy. Yeah. Had your <laughs> first redheaded boy. Mm hmm how has this been for you as a father? Like what's your, I would think that taking a risk like that, starting a business, really doing something pretty, yes, you had plenty of help and support, but this was your vision. Sure. This was your independent with the Lord. Yeah. Vision. How do you want this to impact your kids? Like what kind of taking that risk? You didn't take it with, I'm sure the idea that this thing's just going to dry up when you die. Sure. Oh right? yeah. No, no. Um, and you know, the growth that I got to go on here this last, uh, this last year, even, um, I, I got to do next level here 
uh, back in September. And that was again, one of those, you know, like stone moments where you place a stone down, like saying that this is, this is something yeah. that's going to change. And it's like, I'm going to remember this moment and this time, uh, cause I'm doing something different. I'm going to, I'm going to continue with a dream. It's really easy to think, you know, like this is just a step in the dream. No, like I'm standing in the dream. Yeah. The dream that the Lord gave me and that, that, um, he had for, for, has for me, but I think it, it is just the beginning. There's still, there's still so much he wants to do. We really, like, it, trust me, it'd be super easy to go, oh man, this is great. We're going to just roll this for a while. Yeah. Um, whatever. Yeah. That's not, that's not all he has. Um, because what I think the legacy that I, that I feel like he wants to build, um, you know, it started with something as simple as like my father being a good father. Um, to, I feel like what's coming next, maybe for my kids and what they will grow into is like taking that and bringing it to people in a really, really, really tangible way. Cause the ministry side of what we do is like, um, or, and what I can want to continue to grow in. We're like, this is Dodge city is like the first one and it's the kind of like the proof, the pass and fail and the ups and the, you know, you, you try things and you like them or you don't or, For sure. you know, well, all that stuff you learn. It's, we're definitely learning. I mean, I'm good at making mistakes and following mm-hmm. my face and, and it's okay. Cause we're in a small community and it's safe, you know, yeah. and it, it's a small enough business that, you know, you learn a lot. Right. Um, but then coming like wanting to grow outside of that city, I, I fully believe that that's what God has intended and not just coffee shops or coffee shop churches, there you go. but, being what the church really is. And that's just people yeah. We're people that we have jobs, we do things, but we love people really well. We build community and relationship and it can be done very simply yeah. in the coffee shop, you know, paying people's bills, um, you know, getting them a hotel room, helping them with some gas, um, you know, buying them food, whatever, you know, let them live at your house. Yeah. You know, we're, uh, you know, <laughs> we're doing a lot of those things yeah. and, they, they sometimes can seem like just something we do, but that is like, that's what God asked us to do. You know, the widows, the orphans, you there know, you feeding the hungry, you know? Um, yeah. And if we can do it from a business platform, it's all the better. So all these lessons that you said you've learned good and bad, <clears throat> you've had to, I'm sure retrace some steps and figure mm-hmm. out how to do that differently here or there. What advice since you, cause I, I'm just a firm believer with my boy, Scott Tilly, that the greatest gift that you receive is one that you give away. Like that's the greatest thing you can do is give away what you've been given. Mm. So this, all this advice, all this stuff, all these lessons you've learned, here's your Michael McIntyre moment. (laughs) What advice do you have for those people? Cause I can, I considered myself a dreamer too, man. I have, I have the ability to dream. And for a long time I had the ability to just dream Mm. And do nothing about it. Yeah. It took, and I, I'm just going to say this. I don't think that you could have done that if you weren't in a healthy place yeah. of having people watering that seed, investing in that you seed, know taking what you've said and actually probably pushing you maybe even a little yeah. faster and harder than you wanted yeah. to go at times. What advice do you have for those people that are sitting there dreaming? They've got this vision. They don't think they have enough money. They don't think they have enough support. They don't think that, it's for them, but it's really a passion on their heart. What kind of advice mm-hmm. do you have for somebody like that? Man. I caught you off guard. I know. I know. You know, one of the things I, I, I've, somebody else has, I know said it, I've, I've heard it a few different times, but it is so true. You know, faith is risk. Yeah. Faith is spelled risk. And I, I know yep. you said it. I know uh, yep. Lee Adams says it yep. all the time. It really is. It yeah. really, really is. Um, to walk in faith and that the Lord's going to like do something very different and big for you, with you. Like, and that's what his desire is. Because like I said, you know, I wasn't the risk taker. And I don't think the Lord's like necessarily calling me to always be a risk taker. But when it comes to the things he has. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're li- yeah, relying on him is a risk. That's what faith. I mean, like think about it. Faith is like believing in something that you may not be able to see. It's like believing you're choosing to believe, right? That's good. You're choosing to believe. And so if I'm choosing to believe that God is who he says he is and he wants to do something special, 
and he wants to use me to do it, I got to take a risk. Yeah. I got to go for it. And I think we can think that risk is a dirty word sometimes or it's like, you know, it's maybe uh, uh, not being safe with your money or like it or not stewarding well. Right. I think we use stewarding wrong, but that's, yeah. that's irrelevant. Sure. But I, but I, th- I mean, that's not for this conversation. That's not, it's relevant. <laughs> but yeah. I, I think sometimes in the, in the mindset of stewarding or wanting to, we play things too safe and we're not trusting the Lord has something way greater and more tight like, fingers. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean like, you know, just like our willingness to let our possessions and our money go yeah. to somebody who needs it, whether they're going to go buy dope with it yeah, or not, yeah. or it could be the one, the, the, the thing, the hand up that they needed. Yeah. It's good. You know, or, you know, it's one more step down the rabbit hole before they can start their way back up. It's good. You just never know. It's good. Um, do you feel like this, this <laughs> risk taking and that the Lord took you on changed things for you, like in your heart for future? Yes. Like, yeah. Do you plan on taking risks? Again? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It changed everything about who I yeah. was. I think I took the, the, the base and the core foundation that my father gave me. And now I have, I have a foundation that's steady and solid yeah. that I can like, for me, it, like I'm ready for the next risk. Yeah. Like I want the next Easier risk. Easier to take risks. Yeah. 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 I mean, it doesn't mean it's not scary or it's Correct. not like, I'm not going to like look at all the angles, so to speak in some yeah. ways. Um, but I'm definitely going to take the risks, you know, we're yeah. already stepping into those and we've already, you know, it's made us look at, you know, the things that we pray into and that we, you know, we listen and ask the Lord for like, you know, we wanted to be a roaster second year, bought a roaster, I spent money I did not have, yeah. you know, bought you know more debt, like going into it. But yet it was exactly what we needed to do, That's you true. know? Um, and, and I just, I see the Lord already like honoring that, taking us to the next thing, you know, but one of those things like, did it change me? Yeah. But I, I realized, and this is something I've just really, really recently, like just in the last few weeks, I've been reading this book. It's called, uh, everybody always by Bob Goff. Yep. Oh my gosh. If you yep. have not read that book, yep. you have to read that book. Yep. It will just mess you up. It's so good. It's so simplistic. I love, he, he, he uses this analogy or this like phrase all the time when people are becoming love and it's so simplistic, but what he's saying is Jesus, God is love and we're supposed to become Christ-like. Yes. Be, have a Christ-like mind. You know, love like he does, do the things that he does and greater. Yep. You're becoming love. Yep. It's so much more like I think sometimes when we when we when we put ourselves as like what well, I'm supposed to be like Jesus, we set a bunch of standards that we made up ourselves. When that's ultimately good. what he's saying is, No, you're supposed to become love. That's good. Because that's who I am. Yeah. Because when we're trying to become a person or act like Jesus or do the things that Jesus did, wow. we start to like misinterpret scripture. We start to change um how we see the Lord because of our filters, the things that we put in front of that. Right. But what he's saying is, no, I want you to become love. And that's what I'm learning about myself and my co- and the shop. That's good. It's, I'm trying to become love every day. More dr- is there more dreams in the pipe? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Awesome. I got, yeah. Yeah. I, I want lots of red beards and that meaning that I want to establish people and communities across the nation that, be, there are people becoming love and they're doing it really, really well. Wow. And yeah, it might be messy and there's the ups and downs and people are people. Yeah. And we mess up and we fail, but God is who he says he is That's awesome. all the time. And yeah. I, I just see that being the new, like part of the new movement of the church. That's so good. So it's awesome. Well, man, this has been good. I so pre- good. I appreciate you coming to the studio. Heck yeah. My basement. I love it. That's awesome. I love it. You mind praying us out, man? You know what? You pray for those folks that are maybe, like I said, kind of in that dream world, or maybe maybe they don't have dreams mm. and they need dreams. Mm-hmm. Dude. Pray us out. Jesus, thank you for dreams. Thank you that you are the God of dreams, the creator God who gives us just so much vision and so uh, much desire to seek the greater things. And so, God, I, yeah, I just, I release dreams to, to every person that's listening. Um, God, that you would just awaken their creative mind and heart um, to dream again, to dream maybe for the first time, 
because um, you have plans. You have plans for a hope and a future for all your kids. And so we bless those things. We bless those dreams. And we just say thank you in advance for them. And God, we just thank you for changing us and constantly walking faithfully through the risk of, of faith itself. And so, yeah, we bless all those things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bro, <laughs> love you, dude. Appreciate you, man. Thank I'm glad so I got much. to come on. It's cool. It's good. Thank you.